So that's the strength of the word. So he's, you know, back to Romans 8, we don't know what's deo or die in the nature of a situation. And so sometimes we just have an inability to produce, result, produce results, and that's when Holy Spirit helps us. <clears throat> and this little word help is just one of the most incredible words. It is so long. It's three, com three words. It's a compound word made of three words. Soon anti lambanomai. Soon means together. Anti means against. And lambano means take hold of. So the word literally means to take hold of something together with a person against it or to do something with it, to move it. So this would be the word if I said, hey, we got a, maybe a table here that we want to move and I'm trying to move the thing on one end but six feet on the other. I'm just kind of dragging it and finally say, would you get hold of that other end to take, take hold with me? That would be Sunente Lombardo. So when you say, Holy Spirit, would you take, would you grab the other end of this, please? Yeah. It means share the load. It's, 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 they take this little word, help, and that's okay. It's like, this is what Martha said when, when she went to Jesus and said, would you tell Mary to, why don't you tell her to help me? What she really saying was, you need to make her share the load. What it means to us is, in this context, if we will allow Holy Spirit to pray through us. Sometimes, I don't believe it only just means our prayer language, but I believe it includes our prayer language. I think, it, I think it, it's important to do that, to pray in the Spirit or pray in tongues so that he can literally pray through us. But I also think it would include him leading us as, in our prayers and empowering our prayers. So it's not either or to me, it's both and. Groanings that can't be uttered, I mean, that, that would obviously re refer to tongues. But I think you can be led by the Spirit and be praying in English also. Yeah. And He can be helping you do that. So, sometimes I just say to the Lord, say to the Holy Spirit, if this is a bit overwhelming. I need your help. But, you know, so, and, I, and I, I feel this inability, and I don't even know what's right. And sometimes all you can do is just and just start praying in tongues for about an hour so Holy Spirit can do what because he knows exactly what needs to happen <clears throat> I uh, heard Jack Hayford Jack Hayford's in heaven now but he's just a great patriarch of the church in the four square movement one of the best teachers I've ever heard and he was talking about this verse and then he connected it to Roman or to uh, Genesis 28 where you'll find one of the mentions or uses of the Hebrew word for intercession which is paga which is not always translated intercession in fact more often than not it isn't translated intercession it is a, it is the word has to do with two things coming together a meeting between people uh, but it doesn't have to be people. It could be where the earth and sky meet, the horizon. Anytime there's a meeting or things coming together, it, it, it would be paga. So putting a burden on somebody is paga. You know, so uh, uh, two soldiers fighting when they... Sorry. <laughs> you got my point across, didn't I? That's paga, where then they come together. So it's the word for impinge or strike. So you get the idea. But a part of this word, the meaning of it, it can, it has the connotation at times of meeting or coming up on a place or situation by chance. 
So in Genesis 28, when Jacob is fleeing from Esau on the first night, he's looking for a place to stay, and the sun's going down. Now, he's not guided by his intellect. God makes it very clear in the passage. He's guided by circumstances. Got to find a place to sleep here. Sun's going down. So he comes up on, and King James says, he lights up on. Some translations say he chances upon or happens upon because that's in the connotation of the word when this meeting is not something you're determining by thinking it through here as a plan. It's just the way things worked out and you come to a place that, that, that would be by chance. And, and Hayford's point was, even though it was by chance for Jacob, because he didn't set out to get to Bethel. He didn't understand the significance of Bethel. It had been almost 100 years since Abraham met with God at Bethel. This place didn't mean anything to him. He wasn't even sure he was going to serve Yahweh. Read the whole chapter. It's very clear. God makes all these promises. He says, well, literally. He says, well, okay, if you'll do all this, I'll let you be my God. He's, he's still trying to decide, do I want to serve Canaanite gods? Or the God of Abraham, Yahweh. Or all of them. So he, this place doesn't mean anything to him. That's why he says later, this house of God and gate of heaven, I didn't know it. I mean, some of you know the passage, right? So I get people looking, there, some people out there going, am I telling you the truth? Is that what it says? That's what it says. But God was sovereignly getting him to the place because in Hebrew it doesn't say he came or lighted upon or landed upon or chanced upon a place it says he landed on the place because what was a place to him was the place to God and he had an encounter there where and some people actually believe it. I believe this. He says he put a stone. It's, it's hard to translate. He either put his head on a stone to sleep, use it for a pillow, but that seems kind of hard to me. And others say he put a pillow at his, or a rock at, at his head. As in maybe it was for protection. You know, got something here, if I, an animal comes at night. So we don't know, but, but he grabbed one. And many scholars I've read, Hebrew scholars, they believe that that rock was from a pile of stones, that it had been the altar that Abraham built, that over those year after year had fallen. And then when he put that stone of remembrance up next to his head, Abraham's encounter with God and dream with God came to him. It's like the hover thing, right? <laughs> so, Hayford says, that's the way it is when we pray and we don't know what's necessary. We don't know where to go. Or, but Holy Spirit will pog off through us and cause our prayers to light upon, even if it's to us by chance. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. Well, let me pray through you and I will paga. Yeah. I'll get to the place. Yes. So he pictured it this way. <laughs> this was brilliant. I, I don't always give him credit for it, but I felt convicted here today, so I'm giving <laughs> Hayford credit for it. So he said, it's like a butterfly going from point A to point B, who looks like he doesn't have the slightest idea where he's going. And he said, that's the way I feel sometimes when I'm praying. Lord, what I, 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 uh, 
But he said, you just need to know that when you're allowing Holy Spirit to take hold with you, he's going to take those prayers. And what seems like a chance to you is being led by Holy Spirit. And he's going to land on the right person the right place in the right way because he knows what is necessary and right he knows what's working in their heart he knows what the enemy is using to bind them up he knows what's going on in the hidden offices of Washington DC and if you just let him pray through you he'll hover he'll also light upon 